Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to just start off by um, just clarifying also for the record that the DOD controller undersecretary wanted to be here. I think there was an issue about ensuring that he could be here on, 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 on today's hearing date, so he actually did want to be here, so I just want to clarify that as well. Um, but thank you again for, for being here. Um, today's topic on the DOD's challenges to passing an audit is important to all of us. Uh, the department's efforts to reach a clean audit will help provide greater transparency and visibility so that the funds are used as intended. I uh, want to also just discuss some of the ongoing audit efforts with respect to Ukraine aid. Obviously, it's a very important uh, topic for all of us right now. Um, just to, to start, Mr. Mansfield, how many inspectors general offices are part of the U Ukraine Oversight Interagency Working Group? I, I believe if uh, memory serves correct, it's around 20 uh, currently. Uh, it's led currently by the uh, coalition of the DOD, uh, state, and Agency for International Development Inspectors General. So, so a large and robust group? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, um, Mr. Teneglia, can, can you tell us how many defense-related departments are part of the working group? Uh, Ranking Member Garcia, I believe you're referring to the effort in support of Ukraine. Uh, I don't refer to it as a working group per okay. se, but we have, uh, on the procurement end of it, the Army is executing the significant uh, volume of the, of the business that's providing security assistance in the form of contracts. Other military departments are contributing as well. Thank you. So there's, a multi so there's multiple departments within the Department of Defense that are all part of the working or the, the, the group as far as it relates to Ukraine aid um, and Ukraine, correct, sir? Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Khan, is the Government Accountability Office part of the working group as well? The GAO was requ requested by Congress to uh, provide oversight. We have uh, 24 separate engagement, 10 of them have already been initiated and other dozens will be initiated. We coordinate with this interagency working group that you're referring to. In addition to that, we coordinate with the Inspector General, we coordinate of the DOD, and as well as the Inspector Generals of the State Department and USAID. Thank you very much. So, I mean, there are at least 20 organizations minimum working on Ukraine oversight as part of the interagency working group, including at least 15 offices of, inspect of inspectors general, four defense department components, and the GAO. So and this number, of course, does not reflect uh, more than 20 organizations, half dozen additional OIGs and organizations who have participated in meetings within uh, these oversight groups. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to ask for unanimous consent to enter into the record uh, the, uh, this list of the 20 government auditing agencies that are part of the Ukraine Oversight Interagency Working Group. Without objection, they'll be entered into the record. Thank you. So I, I think um, it's pretty clear that there's a significant amount of uh, uh, of professionals, of groups, of departments um, that are all working on uh, the, you know, important work that's happening in Ukraine, ensuring the auditing, ensuring that, um, uh, that agencies are working together to ensure that money in the American public is actually understanding what is happening out uh, as we're providing this important aid. Um, I want to note that DOD's uh, Inspector General Robert Storch noted in the March 2023 Joint Oversight of the Ukraine Response that DOD agencies have been, quote, positive and productive in their response to the Inspector General. So I just want to be clear, um, and even though I know that some of the majority have claimed that there's no real oversight and no good accounting of the military aid going to Ukraine, that's just not the case and not true. We should stop advancing a narrative which undermines the resistance to Vladimir Putin, who has killed thousands of people, caused the gas price increases of 2022, and threatened the security of the whole world. We should stop a narrative that empowers people who are working to end all of our aid to Ukraine and to ab abandon all of our allies and destabilize the whole world. And we should certainly not empower people who call Ukrainians Nazis. Today on the House floor, these extremists are pushing pro-Putin amendments to the National Defense Authorization Act. This would sell out the Ukrainian people, and I hope all members will join me in opposing them. I yield back. Thank you very much. The uh, gentleman makes very good points, and I appreciate him being a part of this hearing today.